morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship. Um, some announcements for today. Um, for the prayer list, please keep the Shepherd family in your prayers. Kenny's father passed away this last week, and so we keep the Shepherd family in our prayers. Also, I know many of you know Rich Austin, and he's added to our prayer list. And also, we've added Carl Ryer. I'm not sure if that's how I say it correctly, but that's Kelly Alisea's dad, and he's in the hospital right now. And so we remember all those people in our prayers. Um, we're looking forward to Lent. It's coming up soon. We are going to have Ash Wednesday. That is on March 2nd. And then the following Wednesdays after that, we'll start our Wednesday um, meals and worship. And we're doing um, some fun plays. They are about Bible characters that have messed up and they're seeking therapy. And so every single one is a different session with some Bible characters. And so looking forward to that. And um, that begins on March 9th. We are doing something really exciting. And if you want to be a part of it and help plan it, let me know. So we are going to, it's supported by our endowment committee. We're going to do a book giveaway in the community. We're going to order a whole bunch of books um, for kids from infants all the way to high school. We're going to have an event in the park, we're thinking probably this summer. Um, and we'll have a free meal also, and we just, we want to joyfully give. And so um, we'll be giving, inviting people to come and pick out a book. If you would like to be a part of that project of planning, um, let me know. And we're putting a committee together. I also need another committee that I think will be joyful and fun. We're going to be taking part in the Synod's Faithful Innovation Program, and a couple of other Lutheran churches in the area are doing that too. It's a lot like the Renewal Program, if you remember that. Just this way of kind of taking a step back and listening to where God is calling our congregation. There's information about that. If you want to be a part of that team, let me know. Um, also, we're always looking for readers, communion assistants, and people to bring bread. So there, sign up there. Also, you can go on the website to sign up to do that. Do we have anything else today? Okay, well, we will begin worship with an order of confession and forgiveness. Please rise. <clears throat> Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates us, redeems us, and calls us by name. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and your beloved children. We have turned our faces away from your glory when it did not appear as we expected. We have rejected your word when it made us confront ourselves. We have failed to show hospitality to those who called us to welcome. Accept our repentance for the things we have done and the things we have left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us and lead us, that we may bathe in the glory of your Son, born among us, and reflect your love for all creation. Amen. Rejoice in this good news, in Christ. Your sins are forgiven. You are descendants of the Most High, adopted into the household of Christ, and inheritors of eternal life. Live as freed and forgiven children of God. Amen. Amen. Our opening song is Lord of Glory, number 707. We will sing verses 1 through 3.
and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And we pray the prayer of the day together. Let us pray. O Lord Jesus, make us instruments of your peace, that where there is hatred, we may so love, where there is injury, pardon, where there is despair, hope. Grant, O Divine Master, that we may seek to console, to understand, and to love in your name. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. <coughs> First reading is from Genesis chapter 45, verses 3 through 11 and 15, and can be found on page 41 of your pew Bible. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him, so dismayed were they at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, Come closer to me. And they came closer. He said, I am your brother Joseph whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are five more years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it, it was not you who sent me here, but God, he has made me father to Pharaoh, and lord of all his house, and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry, and go up to my father, and say to him, Thus says your son Joseph, God has made me lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, do not delay. You shall settle in the land of Goshen, and you shall be near me, you and your children, and your children's children, as well as your flocks, your herds, and all that you have. I will provide for you there, since there are five more years of famine to come, so that you and your household and all that you have will not come to poverty. And he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them. And after that, his brothers talked with him. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. We will now read Psalm 37 responsibly. Do not be provoked by evildoers. Do not be jealous of those who do wrong. For they shall soon wither like the grass, and like the green grass they will wait. Put your trust in the Lord, and do good. Dwell in the land, and find safe pasture. Take delight in the Lord, who shall give you your heart's desire. Commit your way to the Lord. Put your trust in the Lord, and see what God will do. The Lord will make your vindication as clear as the light, and the justice of your days like the noonday sun. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently. Do not be provoked by the one who prospers, the one who succeeds in evil schemes. We pray in your comfort, be brave to long. Do not be provoked, if it leads only to evil. For evildoers shall be cut off. But those who hope in the Lord shall possess the land. The Lord of the land, the wicked shall be no more and more. Even if you search out their place, they will not be there. But the lowly shall possess the land. They will delight in abundance of peace. The deliverance of the righteous comes from you, O Lord. You are the stronghold in the time of trouble. You, O Lord, will help them and rescue them. You will rescue them from the wicked and deliver them, because in you they seek refuge. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 35 through 38 and 42 through 50, and can be found on page 1051 of your Pew Bible. But someone will ask, How are the dead raised? With what kind of body do they come? Fool! What you sow does not come to life unless it dies. 
And as for what you sow, you do not sow the body that is to be, but a bare seed, perhaps of wheat or of some other grain. But God gives it a body as he has chosen, and to each kind of seed its own body. So it is with the resurrection of the dead. What is sown is perishable. What is raised is imperishable. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a physical body. It is raised a spiritual body. If there is a physical body, there is also a spiritual body. Thus it is written, The first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. But it is not the spiritual that is first, but the physical, and then the spiritual. The first man was from the earth, a man of dust. The second man is from heaven. As was the man of dust, so are those who are of the dust. And as is the man of heaven, so are those who are of heaven. Just as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we will also bear the image of the man of heaven. What I am saying, brothers and sisters, is this. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Word of God, word of life. Please rise for the gospel. The gospel is from Luke chapter 6, verses 27 through 38, and can be found on page 941 of your Pew Bible. The Gospel according to Luke, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, But I say to you that listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies, do good, and lend, expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High, for he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, o Christ. Christ. You may be seated. Love the people that make your life difficult. Love your enemies, bless those who curse you, don't judge, don't condemn. Who really does that? It's really hard. This last week, I was going through some papers and I came across a card that I had meant to send to my mom. It was a New Year's card. I guess they have New Year's cards now. And I picked it up, I'd forgotten all about it. And on the front, there's a, a crabby old looking lady, not supposed to be my mom or anything like that. <laughs> And she's holding up her drink and making her New Year's toast, and she's saying, This year I resolve to say only kind things about everyone. And then you open the card, and inside it says, Well, talk to you next year. <laughs> I was going to send it to my mom, because my mom knows what I sound like when I'm saying whatever I want. Right? We have these people in our lives, our sister, our mom, our best friend, 
that if we listen to ourselves when we're in that safe place, if we really listen to ourselves, we'll find out we're not as nice as we think we are. And look, this is not just women. This is also men. I can tell you this because my first call was in Iowa, and you should hear farmers standing around talking before church about the farmer down the road. Like, this is not just women, right? This is all of us. We love to be right. We love to judge. If you're on Facebook, you might see a lot of these long posts where something happens to someone and they get on their soapbox and they say, you would not believe what happened to me at the grocery store today. And they go on and on and on. How often do you see on Facebook someone posting, you would not believe how I acted at the grocery store today. I was mean to that cashier because I was feeling impatient and I was rude and I got back in the car and I felt so bad about it. And I just want to say to all of us, let's try to be more kind. We probably do go back to our car and feel bad about it, but we don't really admit that we're doing these things. And this stuff is hard, right? Humility is hard. Loving our enemies is hard. Loving people that we love that drive us crazy. It's really hard. But this Christian love, this love that is different, really Jesus is telling us this is the bare bones of following me, is connecting to that love and loving in a way that's totally different, that doesn't expect anything back, a love that is surprising. And look, this is difficult to do in normal times. But I think that we've all seen over the last two years that it's gotten harder because we've been drawing lines and lines and lines and there have been many things that have happened and with our anxiety and our worry and our sadness, we feel even more passionate about the things that we feel passionate about. And as a pastor talking to other pastors, I can tell you that these things, and you might know it in your life, they are dividing families. I have heard stories that these things are causing divorce. So these divisions and, and loving people in this real way, it's, it's very, very difficult. And we say, well, it's just political. But we also know like sometimes things happen in our real lives and it feels really personal. These things, all of these things that have happened, no matter where you stand on things, it has felt personal. And I heard a story recently that a woman shared with me um, about a, her way of kind of connecting to that Christian love and something she decided to do. She is an immigrant. Um, she's from Germany. She grew up in Germany. And she's married to a man who grew up in Minnesota. And her husband's family and her family, they just feel so differently on everything. And it's hard to even have a conversation. And you might know people like this for yourself, like, well, that side of the family, like, we just, just don't really talk, or there are certain things that we don't talk about. So it was like this. And one of the things that's been hard for her is she's an immigrant, and they say things about immigration that are hard for her to hear. And so it's, it's been difficult. And this last fall, her husband's brother came down with COVID and he had a really bad case of it. And he was hospitalized and he was put on a ventilator. And it was really scary. And during this time, this woman just wanted to connect to the family, even though it had been difficult and she didn't quite know how to do it. And she thought, well, I'm Christian and they're Christian and maybe they would want to pray. And so she reached out to them and they live in a different state. And she said, what if we pray for this brother? What if we pray for him every day together? If we get on Zoom at like nine in the morning and then we can just pray for him. And she was very surprised, but they agreed. And so every morning at nine o'clock, they come together over Zoom. She would read something from the Bible and then they lift up their prayer requests. And the brother got better. And so he's out of the hospital now and he's doing well. And she said, you know, it was kind of a miracle that he survived. And she said, but there was another miracle too. And that was the family coming together. And that was the prayer. And she said, it's been 112 days and my husband's brother is better, but we're still meeting over Zoom and praying every morning. What a miracle. And what are the things that God does with these seeds of reaching out and trying? 
when it's hard, when it's risky. It was risky for her to do that. It was risky for them to do that. But they did this and they came together and now they have this connection. And I don't think that Jesus is asking us to stop caring about the things that we care about. But I think Jesus is calling us to find a way that we can keep caring about the people we care about. And so as Christians, as followers of Jesus, we are called to a love that is different. And the way that you do that in your life is going to look totally different than how this person did it in her life. And you might reach out to someone and it might not be received. You might reach out to someone and it might become its own little unfolding miracle. And all throughout your time, you are going to fail at this and Jesus is always going to be there inviting you in again. And if you're listening to this sermon and thinking, oh, I'm thinking about last week and all the times I judged or condemned or didn't do this or could have loved better, you know what? That's okay because this coming week you're going to get plenty of chances. And when you do, may Jesus be with you. And may Jesus give you the strength and the courage and the humility and the love that is different. May you be able to share some of the love that has come your way from Jesus. Amen. Please rise for the hymn.
So we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. You teach us to love our neighbors and enemies alike. Encourage your church to follow, follow the leading of your love, especially when it is risky or difficult. Help us to show mercy just as we have first received mercy. God of grace, hear our prayer. Nurture fields that lie dormant, resting until it is time to bloom again. Bless farmers and all who cultivate fields and urban gardens. Give favorable weather for planting. Bring forth from buried seed an abundant harvest and guard against famine and disease. God of grace, hear our prayer. Look upon our world with mercy that we may, that we delight in an abundance of peace. Protect all whose lives are marred from war and civil unrest. Release political prisoners and amplify the voices that challenge us to seek forgiveness and pursue nonviolence. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your people cry out for mercy. Console hearts that long for forgiveness. Mend broken relationships. Heal bodies that suffer chronic pain or illness. Strengthen and deliver all whose spirits are troubled. We pray for those we know who need your care, and we name them before you now. God of grace, hear our prayer. You bind us together into one family. Teach us to forgive one another and to resolve conflicts with humility and patience. Bless families of all shapes and sizes and show love to those who are lonely or grieving. God of grace, hear our prayer. We praise you for the saints who have inherited the fullness of your kingdom, especially Jimmy, as you have raised them to imperishable and eternal life. Sustain us in faith by the promise of resurrection. God of grace, hear our prayer. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O God, we lift these and all of our prayers to you in confidence and faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. We greet one another with signs of peace. 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 <laughs> On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, <coughs> broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever.
May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. And receive this blessing. God who leads you in pathways of righteousness, who rejoices over you, and who calls you by name, bless your going out and your coming in, today and forever. Amen. And our sending song is number 655. We will sing verses 1 through 3. <coughs>